All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to talk about um, some different ways that you can fix red eye, which can still happen in some modern digital cameras. And um, red eye, as you see here in these example, or some of these example pictures, except for this guy here, I'm not really sure who funny, fun, funny Ordy is. But red eye is what happens when you use a camera flash in either like a dark room or a medium light room like this kid here. And it's just like the flash of the camera reflecting in your eyeballs uh, because, well, that's what eyeballs do. They're, 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 they're somewhat reflective, as you can see in this eye where it's reflecting the lights in the room. So we're going to look at a couple ways to fix that. There's a red eye tool. And there's a couple of other basic tools that we can use to fix that. Um, let me go to my search tools. Let's find a nice large image for red eye. So we'll grab this lady. And then, hmm, who's another decent example? So this one's not bad, this little baby. And then, I guess, I guess there isn't a lot of good red eye examples. We'll take this demon looking kid and this kid. And we'll just use these as random examples. So this is the Wikipedia example. And we'll take this into Photoshop. Ignore the Daft Punk image. This is for another video tutorial that I'm going to be doing um, tomorrow, where I talk about how to create a dissolving character effect, and I'm preparing for that. So we're going to get a new, you know, little um, artboard here set up and we're gonna slap in this image. If you have something copied in your clipboard on your computer, then Photoshop will automatically assume you wanna make a new document from that image, so it'll create a new document from the document file type clipboard, and it'll match the dimensions of the image that you've got. Now this person, uh, they've got some little peach fuzz on their cheeks here that you can see, they have some pretty intense looking red eye and the primary tool that you would use for this if you were just going to make a quick touch up is underneath the healing brush tools. Down here it's the red eye tool and you just select in a little square the red eye and then it kind of compensates for it by just slapping some black over top of the red eye sample. It's not great, but in a pinch, if you're not very skilled at Photoshop, it's not the worst way about going about doing it. And this might actually work better for this kid. I'm not really sure. This looks like it's from some movie, like the Children of the Corn or something. But if we slap this kid in here and we use the red eye removal tool, because these eyeballs are pretty dark, this actually looks okay. Now, it kind of looks like it's had its retinas burned out, this kid, but in a pinch, that's not bad. Now, let's go back here, and let's back up a little bit to this person. I can't tell if it kind of looks like a woman, but I could just be bad at telling. And I kind of want to get rid of this little zit here. But the other way that you can kind of fix this is if you select, just grab a copy of this layer, and then we just kind of grab the eyeballs with a quick selection with the marquee tool and then we slap those eyeballs in an alpha channel so we just have the eyeballs I mean you don't necessarily have to do that but you can and we can just throw in some hue and saturation here we select the main picture in our layers panel and we can just open up hue and saturation here and we can go give me the magentas or let's start with the reds and let's see if we've got yeah we pretty much have the reds let's colorize them whoops that's not what i want you to do i'll do that um let's grab the reds and let's pull out the saturation and so that's basically the pupil right there the stuff that's reflecting right now is the pupil and really what you should be doing is you should just pull down the reds so that they're black because the pupil's supposed to be black and then we'll grab those magentos which is the purple and then we'll just pull out that saturation and now 
if we throw that back in there. Oh my gosh, look at that. Although this is kind of tricky because now you see that these pupils have kind of grayed out the eyeball a little bit, but that kind of did a nice job of making it seem more natural. And if we select that alpha channel again and grab our brush tool by selecting B, we can then adjust that alpha channel with the black color. Black makes things invisible in these alpha channels here, and white makes them visible. We can kind of trace around this square so that it's just covering those little pupils, and then we don't have to worry about it so much. So let's just... It's just a... Uh, well, A, let's select a brush that's a little feathered, and then we can just adjust... Whoops, that's too feathered. We can just adjust around the edge here just a smidgen, and that way it looks more natural. Yay, natural. Everyone likes it oh natural, right? Yeah, that's not bad. We can go with that. Now let's look over at this eyeball. Again, if you look right down here, we kind of got some gray going on. We'll keep selecting that alpha channel, bring back our brush, and we'll just kind of erase the gray. Because, you know, human skin has red in it. It's pink. It's got reds, it's got magentas, and it's got greens. So you gotta be careful you don't mutilate it too badly. And there we've got a fix for the red eye. And that's a pretty easy fix. You could also um, just do some color fixing of just the eyes with some other different color tools. Like you could use, you know, a color balance tool here. But really all you gotta do is just whatever method you prefer, you pull out those reds, and then you pull out the color in this reflection in these pupils, because that's gonna appear, like in this case, it's gonna appear very blue in the default images of the eyes. It's very blue. And we could even do this for this other sort of baby, but this baby's looking a little demonic. A little, little bit demonic. If you go between the different pieces in the history list. Yeah, that's not the best way to go about fixing that. But, you know, again, if you're in a pinch, the red eye tool is not terrible. But again, it's not great either. So I'd prefer to do that manually. And it doesn't take very long to fix these. And if you have a better camera, a lot of them have the ability to fix that, but my recommendation is don't use the flash on your camera. You'll thank me later. Just take them in an area with not poopy light, if you have to take a family photo, and you should be good to go. So, I guess that's the only methods I'd really recommend for starting out. There's a couple other tools you could fiddle with, but again, these are just color correction tools. You can just pick the one you like to use best. You could even... You could even just use a color replace brush. So it's up to you. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra, talking about fixing Red Eye in Adobe Photoshop CC. Um, we're still using the 2015 edition of Photoshop, but these tools don't really change all that much. And as we leave here today, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I need to get rid of this zit, because it's bugging me. Get out of here. Frickin' rosacea spots. Gotta fix this boat. It's almost like I've done this before. Gotta get all these little little nibbles out of here. And this one up here. This one's got a little flea bite. Alright, well anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys and gals. We've got some more in-depth, sort of project-based tutorials coming up for Photoshop. And I'll catch you next time. Toodles, everybody.